Coming up on this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We'll introduce you to seven operations that have made stewardship and conservation a priority as we highlight the 2020 winners of the Environmental Stewardship Award. And now, a special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Hello and welcome to a special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Auctioner. Thanks for joining us. Each year since 1991, the Environmental Stewardship Award Program, also known as ESAP, recognizes the nation's best operations for their outstanding stewardship practices and conservation achievements. These regional and national winners are honored for their commitment to protecting the environment and improving fish and wildlife habitats while managing profitable cattle operations. The common trait among all winners is the desire to leave the land in better shape for future generations, while also inspiring the next generation of land stewards. Today, we're introducing the seven regional winners for 2020 and taking a closer look at their operations. We'll also hear from our outstanding program sponsors and discuss why the stewardship program is so important to the ongoing success of the beef industry. Now, this program would not be possible without the support of sponsors who have joined with NCBA and the National Cattlemen's Foundation to keep the environmental stewardship program going strong. We begin with a look at these valuable partners. For those who live on America's ranches and farms, the land provides their livelihood. They depend on a healthy environment. And for 30 years, a select group of cattle producers have been honored with the Environmental Stewardship Award, given by the National Cattlemen's Beef Association and National Cattlemen's Foundation. The award is sponsored by Corteva AgriScience, McDonald's, the NRCS, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Generous support from sponsors has been one key to the success and longevity of the Environmental Stewardship Award Program. Another has been the commitment of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. And joining us now is Colin Woodall, the Chief Executive Officer of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, Welcome, Colin. Let's begin with a little history. What exactly prompted NCBA to create the Environmental Stewardship Award way back in 1991? We created this program because we knew that it, we had to take an opportunity to showcase all the great work that was being done on cattle farms and ranches across the country to protect the natural resources. But what's interesting about it is we did that before the whole topic of sustainability and environmental impact was cool. So we really were visionary in the creation of this pro program because we knew just how important it was to protect the natural resources, whether that's the land, the air, the water, and to be able to recognize those producers who are doing such a great job of that. And that's why the Environmental Stewardship Award Program has been so successful over the years. Now you use the word visionary. It really is visionary to think that three decades ago, we were focusing on stewardship and care of the land, isn't it? You know, when you look at what we're dealing with today, everybody's talking about sustainability. They're talking about climate change, greenhouse gases, and the overall environmental impact. They weren't talking about that 30 years ago. But NCBA saw that this was going to be a continued issue and one that was going to continue to put pressure on us as producers to show why we should be able to keep doing what we were doing. And the best way to combat any detractors in this uh, particular area is to be able to showcase the great work that we are already doing. And that's why ESAP has been so successful because it's allowed us to be able to show the different types of activities being done across the country because we know that cattle production in New York is not the same as cattle production in Hawaii. So being able to show all the different ways that it's being done and protecting the natural resource at the same time is just a great, great opportunity for us as an industry. So I got to ask you, have those stories uh, of what cattle producing families have done to 
care for the land and livestock really helped NCBA's work here in Washington, D.C.? Well, they've been able to help our work across the board. In Washington, D.C., we've been able to take national winners and regional winners of the Environmental Stewardship Award. We've been able to bring them to Washington, D.C., where they have done congressional briefings, talking to members of Congress and also the staff on both the House and Senate side. And also we've had Environmental Stewardship Award winners come in and testify in front of Congress. So it's been a great opportunity to utilize producers that probably without ESAP, we would not have known, would have had such a great story to be able to tell. But it's also the bigger effort on behalf of NCBA to protect our industry and go out and advocate for our industry and to show what a great role we provide in being those true stewards of the land, the air, and the water, whether that's on national television, whether that's in newspapers. In fact, we just were able to utilize a lot of this information during New York City's Climate Week to be able to show that we're part of the solution, we're not part of the problem. And we really do have a good story to tell, don't we? We have a great story to tell. and It's becoming easier and easier to tell as more and more people actually apply for the Environmental Stewardship Award. And as we grow each year's group of award winners to be able to pull from different regions, different states, in order to meet a lot of the local concerns that we see in big cities. So Colin, what would you say to encourage other farmers and ranchers out there to get involved both in NCBA and perhaps even recognizing that they too could be nominated for an Environmental Stewardship Award. Cattle producers need to be a member of NCBA because we are being very proactive in protecting our industry and trying to chart this course on environmental stewardship under our terms, not the terms of the federal government. And the only way we can do that is with these stories and with the grassroots help that makes NCBA so powerful. But at the same time, if you are a cattle producer that's an NCBA member and you're looking around and said, hey, I'm doing a lot of good stuff on my operation, or you know a neighbor who is doing some really great stuff on their operation, nominate them, nominate yourself, be a part of this, because we want to try to have as many applicants as possible to showcase that this is not a situation that's only happening on one or two operations around the country. This is a daily practice on cattle operations everywhere. and We need to do everything we can to showcase as many as possible. Colin, thanks for your time. We sure appreciate it. Thank you, Kevin. NCBA represents cattle farmers and ranchers in seven different regions around the country. And accordingly, there is one winner of the Environmental Stewardship Award from each of the seven regions. So now it's time to reveal our first honoree for 2020. And we begin in Region 1 with a visit to the winning operation from the state of New York. I believe we're here as stewards to manage the land. We like to use the term manage instead of trying to farm it and work it because that's you're trying to force yourself on things. Instead, we try and work harmoniously with the land and nature. SK Herefords is a family operation. I'm the K in the SK with my daughter Alana and her husband Zach and my wife Dawn and my business partner Dave Schubel. Alana and Zach are the sixth generation and I have seven grandchildren and one on the way that I hope will be the seventh. Taking care of the land is a top priority for everybody here at SK Herefords from me to my parents to Zach and anybody that we come in contact with we make sure that that priority is clear. All of our decisions are based upon our location. Uh, we have Oak Orchard Creek, which goes through the eastern part of the farm, which flows directly into Lake Ontario. We've taken a lot of steps to help keep the creek clean. We have buffer strips that are between our cattle and the creek, and we've made a lot of permanent fencing around the creek to kind of deter the cattle from getting close to the creek. Our goal is to keep that water as pristine as possible until that all the people that go canoeing and kayaking and fishing and swimming can all have that wonderful experience of having great, clean, fresh water. So we had started the direct marketing to farmers markets around five or six years ago, I would say. 
and it's been huge for our farm. We sit between two cities of over a million people and those those folks when we go to their farmers markets they like to talk with the farmer they like to be able to connect with that farming community and we get to tell our story we get to tell the story of our farm and people really want to hear that story interacting with our customers at the farmers market it really gives us the opportunity to show the customers that we not only care for our cattle but we care for the land as well I believe in what we're doing. I wouldn't be here doing it if I didn't. And as having young children, I want to leave this place in as good a shape as I can for the future generations. I think we're living our dream of uh, farming, uh, raising cattle, raising forages, uh, raising kids and grandkids. I think it's, uh, it's a very happy place at SK Herefords. We care for the land because it's a God-given responsibility. We're all part of the land, and we need the land, the resources of the land, and we need it to carry on to the next generation. Hello, I'm Damon Palmer, Pasture and Land Management Business Leader at Corteva AgriScience. What a year 2020's been. We realize the uncertainty and stress levels farmers and ranchers have endured this year. But one thing that has been steadfast day in and day out, no matter what is happening in our world, is the dedication and hard work from the cattle men and cattle women across this country. Corteva is proud and honored to be able to sponsor the NCBA Environmental Stewardship Awards for more than 20 years. First as Dow AgriSciences and now as Corteva. We believe wholeheartedly in the mission behind these awards. And at Corteva, we aim to enrich the lives of those who produce and those who consume, ensuring progress for generations to come. My colleagues and I are committed to showing you this and serving you day in and day out. We're proud to salute all of the 2020 regional winners of the Environmental Stewardship Award. They are all pillars of the cattle industry and exemplify environmental stewardship. We thank you for what you do to provide food to consumers while doing what is good for the environment. Congratulations. Now, if you'd like to find out more about the Environmental Stewardship Award winners, see photos and videos, or even learn how to nominate someone for the award next year, visit the website environmentalstewardship.org. We're just getting started on this special edition of Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Coming up, we'll introduce you to six more operations that have made stewardship a priority as we continue our look at the 2020 ESAP Regional Winners. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Getting to run a family farm is a dream come true. When you can grow good grass, there's opportunity to grow plenty of weeds. We want to use the tools that will help us do a better job. I would like the legacy to be that we took really good care of the land and we truly did it as a passion and we did our very best for the right reasons. What does it mean to be dependable? It means you do what you say you'll do time and time again. Because performance isn't optional and your task is essential. For over 95 years we have proven ourselves to be the most dependable choice. That's why the cattlemen of this great nation trust Ritchie to provide fresh water on demand. Ritchie, proud to be a partner to the American cattlemen since 1921. They're here, they're hungry, and they can't be stopped with ivermectin alone. Add Safeguard when you deworm your cattle to take out resistant parasites like brown stomach worm, cuperia, nematodirus, and others. With two dewormers from two different classes, you can kill more resistant worms in your cattle, so you don't leave potential on the table. Consult your veterinarian for the diagnosis and treatment of parasitism, then bite back at safeguardworks.com. Cattle producers face all kinds of challenges when it comes to protecting the environment, but they all have one common goal, leaving the land better than they found it. 
Today, we're taking a look at the 2020 regional winners of the Environmental Stewardship Award. Now, let's head to Region 2 and meet the winners from Mississippi. Stewardship is always a teaching opportunity. I'm a teacher at heart, and so this, this farm is extremely important to me, not just to produce quality beef, not just to be a great environmental steward, but to be able to use the practices we have here to teach others. Southern Cross Farm is the quintessential family farm. You have multi-generations. We're all passionate about the industry, about cattle production, and about the opportunities that it provides for our family to do something together. As a veterinarian, I'm really interested in the science behind the cattle raising, the nutrition of the grass, which affects the cattle growth and weight gain and the uh, different species of grass and the palatability of the grass. God designed this land that we have here to be a great grass producer. The slope of the land, it's not suited for crops or it shouldn't be put in crops. The soil type is well suited to grass in a variety of forages. So we're using the cows to help increase the soil health. We've taken soil samples so that we know what the soil sample says that the land needs. And then cows are wonderful fertilizer applicators if we move them around properly. It's getting out and looking and, and paying attention to what's going on the ground. My particular interest was to have a model farm operation that would kind of follow the One Health model, where the animals, the plants, and humans can coexist and benefit from one another. First of all, you can work with the, the, the cattle themselves to replenish the environment because they're an ecosystem in themselves. You can be an excellent environmental steward and at the same time grow a quality product for the consumer. You get out what you put in, so we need to be good stewards of the land, make sure we take care of our land so it takes care of our cattle who in turn take care of us. I've learned so much from my parents watching them work on this property and the care that they put into it, especially insofar as trying to implement best practices that are research-based and also appropriate for this specific farm. My hopes for the future is that this land stays productive and is cared for and is loved in the way that Gary and I have loved it, I do feel that our place is making a difference. At McDonald's, we're, pr we're proud to be a sponsor of the Environmental Stewardship Awards program. We don't have a product without U.S. cattle men and women uh, and all that they do to produce beef. And so working with NCBA, uh, and all the programs that they've got to support uh, American farmers and ranchers is, is crucial for our business. There's so much good happening uh, throughout the industry and it's important, especially in, in tough times for farmers and ranchers, to celebrate that good. The Environmental Stewardship Awards program is a, is a really special program and the way that it brings out the best of the best. And the U.S. industry itself is already, it it's, operates at such a high level. Uh, to be able to pull out th those uh, premier ranchers that are taking such extraordinary care of their, their land um, and celebrate them and celebrate the way that they represent the industry is, is just a, it's a, it's a really special thing to be able to be a part of that. So how are the ESAP regional winners selected and what do they mean to the beef industry? Joining us now is T. Wright Dickinson, a Colorado cow-calf producer and chair of this year's ESAP selection committee. T. Wright, why is ESAP so important to the beef industry? Kevin, the, the program has allowed us to highlight the good work that producers do every day. The award winners that you're going to see here tonight are the folks that are leading our industry in their production practices. So specifically, what's impressed you about this group of regional winners? I was really pleased to see the competition amongst the NCBA regions we had multiple producers participating, 
and it was a very difficult uh, uh, selection process that I know that the committee members worked with in in uh, in coming up with each of their regional award winners. And my hats off to everyone. Obviously, there's always stiff competition, but what makes an operation stand out to the selection committee? It's really important to, to for, for members to participate in their industry, to participate in, in interacting with the public, and for doing the good conservation work uh, and, and being able to articulate that to our consumers. T. Wright, thank you so much for your service. Kevin, thanks for hosting, and my congratulations to all of the regional winners. Now, one of these regional stewardship award winners will be named the national winner at the 2021 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. The convention is an outstanding place to share beef industry success stories like these and to gather ideas and education and additional information that will help your cattle business for years to come. If you'd like to join us in Nashville, all the details can be found on the website convention.ncba.org. I'll be there, and I hope to see you there too. When we come back, we've got five more states to visit and five more outstanding operations to highlight. So stay with us. This whole quarter pounder operation revolves and relies on one hot and deliciously juicy hunk of quality beef. The hottest, juiciest quarter pounder yet. Made with 100% fresh beef. It's perfect. Made perfecter. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. At Case IH, we believe it's our job to provide you with solutions. That's why our Farmall and Maxim tractors, as well as our tools and attachments, are designed with you in mind. From mowing to baling to loading and more, we're here to help turn your to-dos into to-dones. At Case IH, we'll keep your days running smoothly with equipment that's durable, versatile, and highly efficient. No wonder farmers are more loyal to Case IH than any other brand. Visit your local dealer or go to caseih.com forward slash livestock for more. If you're looking for outstanding forage developed Angus cattle, look no further than Yon Family Farms in Ridge Springs, South Carolina. The Yon Family is hosting their 17th annual fall sale on October 31st at 11 a.m., offering 100 females, 100 yearling bulls, and 200 two-year-old bulls. Proven genetics from a family committed to their customers. Find out more about the sale at yonfamilyfarms.com. Welcome back as we continue our look at the Environmental Stewardship Regional Award winners for 2020. For the past three decades, the Environmental Stewardship Award program has done two very important things. First, it's helped to show the general public just how effectively farmers and ranchers care for their land. And it also provides fellow cattle producers with examples and ideas which may be useful on their own farming and ranching operations. Let's head to Region 3 and the winning operation in Iowa. Taking care of the land, the soil, and the cattle are a top priority for our family. It's something that is in our DNA. Randy and I love living on the farm, and we're thrilled to have the next generation coming on, Michelle and Steve, to take over the operation. It means a lot to have my family involved, that they're interested in helping achieve what we've started. There was just a natural fit for us here. It's actually a century farm that we live on, which means it's been in the family 100 years. And yeah, we're just really proud to be here and be able to do what we love. We take a holistic approach on our operation where you know we're raising the corn, we feed it through the cattle, then we use the manure from the feedlot to put back to the crops and it all just kind of works seamlessly. We take advantage of services that help us analyze our soils, know exactly what needs to be put on the soil so that we can prescribe what needs to be put out there. 
God only gave us so much soil, we want to make sure that we keep it for generations to come. Some of the things we've found with, through cover crops, through grazing cattle, is that that's what holds our dirt in place and that's what's kind of kept us successful and profitable in the years. In this section of Iowa, Southwest Iowa, we have some fragile soil in places. Because of the fragile soil, we have to protect our runoff and try and hold everything we can, nutrients, water, on the farm. So we are all engaged in the effort to limit the soil erosion and limit nutrients that, that leave our farm. So we do everything that we can, cover crops, terracing, to prevent nutrients from getting into those naturally occurring waterways. I believe cattle in a good, clean environment can go hand in hand. That the cattle are the reason why we are able to um, be good stewards of the land here in Southwest Iowa. We love cattle, and cattle work really well for us. We're hopeful that um, we can continue to do that into the future and that more people can adopt practices to keep livestock on the landscape. If we're gonna be here and farm this ground in 100, 200 years, this is the stuff we have to do now to make sure we're moving in the right direction. Myself and my family care for the land, care for the cattle, because we feel it is the right thing to do. Without water, without sunshine, without grass, you don't have beef. <laughs> it's all, it all works together. And joining us now from Texas is Gary Price. He's the co-chair of the Environmental Stewardship Selection Committee. Gary, why is it so important to tell the story of how farmers and ranchers care for the land through a program like the ESAP program? Well, Kevin, uh, as you know, uh, consumers want to know where their food comes from these days, and they especially want to know where their beef comes from. We think when the uh, consumer sits down and, and uh, enjoys a piece of beef, a nice steak, that they need to do that with the confidence that they know that that product was produced by a producer that's not only taking care of the cattle, but also the land, the air, and the water. So as a past winner, what kind of opportunities has winning this award opened up for your own 77 Ranch and your family? Well, Kevin, uh, it's just been tremendous. It's opened so many doors for us. We've met so many great producers all over the country and we've got to visit their operations. And uh, it's given me the opportunity to speak at several different events. And uh, that's just been tremendous. We've been able to host several ranch tours because of the, the award. And uh, one in particular that stands out, we were given the opportunity a few months ago through the flagship farmer award with McDonald's to host their senior leadership team here at the ranch. And uh, what a great day that was to get to meet all of their leadership team and to um, let them ask questions about our operation and our cattle and what we're doing. So uh, we both have a better understanding of each, each other side of the business. We, uh, we're really grateful to NCBA for giving us that opportunity through the uh, Environmental Stewardship Award, and it's just opened so many doors for us. Now, as a member of the selection committee, can you tell us what are the kinds of things the committee is actually looking for in its winners? You know, these producers are looking for more optimum production, not just maximum production. And we like to think that that's really what true sustainability is when you find that perfect balance there. These, uh, these producers are passionate about what they do. There's no doubt they get up every morning thinking, how can I make my operation better? How can I improve my cattle production? And uh, they're also very transparent about what they do as well. They're willing to open their gates to tell others and show others, and they really have a reverence for the land. Thank you, Gary, and please tell your whole family hello for us. Now, we've already seen three great operations as we highlight the 2020 winners of the Environmental Stewardship Award. Let's head to Region 4 and meet the winners from Oklahoma. This land is able to produce enough beef, enough electricity, and enough water to supply close to 70,000 homes. And I think that's pretty neat for, for 30,000 acres right here in, in nowhere, Oklahoma. I'm 
Chuck Coffee, myself, my wife Ruth, and our three children all manage a Double C Cattle Company located in the Arbuckle Mountains in southern Oklahoma. We run about 30,000 acres and run about 1,000 commercial spring calving cows. We really value land, livestock, and legacy. Um, those are our three most important words, pretty much, for the Double C Cattle Company. Water is a limiting factor on this property, so we've done a lot of development with solar wells to, to help with grazing distribution. It's really changed the way we've been able to manage our cattle and graze cattle more efficiently on, on different sides of the pasture that we've not ever been able to get cattle over there because we don't have available water. Eastern red cedar trees is, you know, a very serious problem. We have encroachment issues on this beautiful prairie that you can see. The problem with cedar trees, they drink lots of water, they destroy all the ground underneath, and then they create areas of erosion. Sometimes it'll be an eastern red cedar forest and you get absolutely nothing out of it as far as grazing or the wildlife can't use it, people can't use it. We consider red cedar a scourge in this part of the country. To control eastern red cedar, we do it primarily through fire. These grasses actually evolved under fire and grazing, so it's something that's healthy and needed for an ecosystem like this. So through prescribed fire, we've noticed several benefits because I can look at places where there was no grass and now there is grass. That to me is just Mother Nature saying, you're doing the right thing. For me, stewardship is gonna be taking care of this land in a way that my ancestors can be proud of, my kids are gonna be proud of, and our community, you know, that we live with and interact with every day can be proud of. You know, it doesn't really hit home to you what's gonna happen next until you have a kid. And then you learn, you know, you're not gonna live forever. And this little guy right here is uh, coming up next. Since I have a son now, I think of more of the legacy. I believe that if we can be good stewards and care for it while we're here, it'll be in good shape for the next generations. We don't look at it that we own the land. We look at it as if we're blessed to have the privilege to manage the land during the short time that we're here because it'll be here long after we are. Hello, I'm Kevin Norton, Acting Chief of the Natural Resources Conservation Service. For over 20 years, our agency has been a partner of the NCBA Environmental Stewardship Program, or ESAP. Along with all of our team, we're so proud to be sponsors of this prestigious award. With all of you who raise cattle and manage grasslands around the country, we share that same value of stewardship and commitment to voluntary conservation. We truly appreciate the dedication, the hard work that all cattle raisers do in caring for their animals, their families, and their land. For all these years, it has been an honor to be a partner of ESAP's ongoing effort to recognize outstanding land stewardship. Those cattle operations, you, the people in every region of the country who go the extra mile every day to take what they have and continuously improve it for their family and for all of us who depend on a clean, healthy environment. NRC is as proud to be here today to honor all of you, the 2020 regional winners of the Environmental Stewardship Award. Thank you and congratulations. Now, if you want to rewatch the stories of these regional winners, be sure to visit the Environmental Stewardship Awards page on YouTube. Not only can you see this year's winners, but you can check out winners from past years as well. We're not done talking about the 2020 ESAP regional winners. When we come back, we'll show you the great work being done at three more award-winning operations. Stay with us. Cattle producers across the country work hard to care for their animals and their land. The USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service is there to help. Find out how you can work with NRCS 
to develop a conservation plan for your operation. Find possible funding resources for implementing conservation practices or get free expert advice on ways to improve your farm or ranch. Visit the website nrcs.usda.gov today. This is Hard Brand Cattle. Family owned, family run, prime focused and home to the largest and best source for Akushi genetics in the world. U.S. commercial cattlemen are buying our bulls because they work. If you raise Akaushi cattle, we have a buyback program. Our cattle grade 45% USDA prime, less than 2% select, averaging a 2.8 yield grade. It's time you earn premiums over commodity prices. Akaushi provides beef customers with the best beef eating experience. Visit us at heartbrandcattle.com. Welcome back. Every day, cattlemen and women do all they can to provide the best possible care for their land and the animals who call that land their home. They do so because they're committed to protecting and improving their natural resources and leaving a strong legacy for the next generation. Today, we're highlighting the 2020 regional winners of the Environmental Stewardship Award. Let's take you to southeastern Colorado to meet the Region 5 award winner. When I think about what my great-grandfather and my grandfather would think now when they look down on us, I think they'd be proud. I think they would say that we've carried the family tradition forward of care of the land, care of the animals, and care of family. This ranch was purchased by my great-grandfather in 1929, and our family has been there four generations for Joy and I, and we're fortunate to have the fifth and sixth generations on the ranch with us and our daughter, son-in-law, and our grandchildren. The land in Southeast Colorado where we live is fairly rough. <laughs> it's semi-arid, we have periods of rain, and then we have periods of drought. We're in an environment where we've got a lot of cactus, we've got minimal growth of, of forages and we have to plan continuously how we can stockpile those forages against an area that doesn't have an abundant moisture. We became aware of the possibility of being more effective in keeping our range in good condition by rotating the cattle so that the majority of the ranch during the growing season the cattle aren't on it. The reason why we rest the pasture is that when the cows go through the ranch and then the pasture gets rain on it, then it will grow grass and then the cows come back to that pasture. So it's kind of a full circle. We've been able to improve our drought resistance through pasture management. By being able to have more rest in our pastures, grow more forage for next year by not having cattle in there, lets us go year over year without having to make drastic management decisions. Water is essential and it's very sparse and hard to come by in this country. Putting tanks and strategically placing tanks in different areas of the pasture have allowed the cows to go and graze areas that predominantly they might not have grazed because there was no water. The things we've done to improve the land and the water, we've seen a great improvement in the wildlife. We've seen more deer and bighorn sheep and turkey. I love what I do because it fills my heart. It gives me great pride to see my kids and my parents all together. It's the best. It's the best life to be with your kids and to be in the great outdoors and to, to see God's creation every day. To say that, that I love this land is even not enough of an expression of how we feel about this, how blessed we are that the Lord has put us in this position where we can be here we can grow our family here, that we can leave a legacy behind. Hello, I'm Heather Johnson with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Partners for Fish and Wildlife Program. Thank you for the opportunity to join all of you to recognize our regional winners of the Environmental Stewardship Award Program with the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Like the other sponsors, I'm so proud to be here to recognize these families for this very prestigious award. 
it's an incredible amount of hard work to get here. It takes a lot of innovation and collaboration and resources. They're truly cowboying up, neighboring up, and partnering up and raising the bar. When the bar is already very high, as you well know, they're raising the bar for outstanding land stewardship, taking care of their animals and their family, as well as creating habitat for fish and wildlife populations for all of Americans to be able to enjoy. We are so proud to recognize all these families, the regional winners of the Environmental Stewardship Award Program. On behalf of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the Partners Program, thank you, congratulations, and take care, my friends. Are you impressed with our Stewardship Award winners so far? Believe me, you're just catching a snapshot of all the hard work, effort, and ingenuity these cattlemen and women have put into improving the land under their care. Now, let's continue on with another ESAP winning operation. This time, we head to Nevada for a look at the Region 6 winner. I love what I do and there's really nothing I'd rather be doing than raising cattle here with my family. It's the passion in my life and I enjoy it very much. My name is Steve Boyce. My family has been on this particular ranch since 1945. And Rob and my wife and I have been ranching here for over 40 years. This ranch is interesting because it, I tell people it's, it's, it's bigger than the small ones and smaller than the big ones, but it's never without family members being involved in the day-to-day -day work. The ranch is about 120,000 acres, and it's a combination of private property and public property that we manage. There's a lot of difference in public land versus private land holdings. If we want to make any improvements, a water trough, a fence line, anything like that, we have to go through a regulatory process, and that can take a lot of time to get that done. Yes, 80% of the land is government land, but we like to think that we treat it as our own. We're stewards of all the land, and to us, there's no line between that public and that private. We, we manage it all the same. 25 years ago, it was obvious we needed to make some changes. It, it wasn't working on the land, and it wasn't working financially. My wife attended a savory class and listened to Alan Savory. It really did open our minds to uh, how beneficial cattle could be to the land if managed properly. It made us think about things very differently. Nothing was getting any kind of rest. There weren't the fences to control the cattle. And so there was a real paradigm shift that had to happen. Just because your grandfather did it, or it's been done for 100 years, doesn't mean it's the right thing. We had to build fences, and probably even more important was we installed a lot of water projects that, that allows us to, to manage our cattle and rotate the cattle the way we need to. We've turned it around not in spite of cattle, but because of cattle. We use those cattle as a tool, and it's a, you don't have a lot of tools out here, and grazing is one of them. Steve and I feel that our job isn't done here and that we hope to and our objective is to leave things better than when we started out 43 years ago. It's a fun journey, but uh, yeah, we may not see the benefits of many of the things that, that, that we're doing right now, but for the generations to come behind us, uh, they will see it and that means a lot to us. And I hope that the future generations can enjoy it as much as Robin and I have. These Environmental Stewardship Award winners are helping to make a difference every day. To join them as a member of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, just give us a call at 866-233-3872 or visit the website ncba.org. We've got one more ESAP Regional winner to show you. We'll introduce you to that operation when we return. Stay with us. 
Partners for Fish and Wildlife is the landowner assistance program of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Our 240 biologists are located in all 50 states and they are habitat consultants that help you improve the habitat on your land. We provide technical and financial assistance by designing custom projects that suit your needs on working lands. All it takes is a phone call or email to get started. To learn more, visit our website or find us on Facebook. Did you know that Prefert makes over a thousand different farm, ranch, and rodeo items? And now, thanks to Prefert Direct, it's easier than ever before to get access to every item Prefert makes delivered direct to your local dealer. For more information about Prefert Direct, visit us at Prefert.com. Prefert, America's number one name in farm, ranch, and rodeo. Out of the box for the Rewrite Side of Rodeo, three audio books, rodeo novels by Baxter Black. A total of 23 hours following our cowboy guys and gals on the road to the finals. Rambunctious, exciting, kind-hearted, and funny, of course, $39.90. CDs or downloads, BaxterBlack.com, 800-654-2550. On the road to the rodeo, horse show, state fair, ball game, or grandma's house, climb on up and take a ride with me. Welcome back. We're bringing you some great stories about those who make their living on the land and their outstanding conservation efforts as we honor the 2020 Environmental Stewardship Award Regional Winners. Now, let's introduce you to the Region 7 winner from South Dakota. Taking care of the land and the animals is our number one priority. It's uh, the reason we do what we do, to provide a stable and healthy food source. My name is Brian Johnson. Uh, we farm with my parents, Alan and Mickey, and my wife, Jamie, and all our four kids. Brian and I are the fourth generation on this farm, so our kids will be the fifth generation of people living here and working the land. And it's been in the Johnson family since 1906. We are extremely focused on soil health. That is probably a mission statement that we should have on the wall in our office. That's the one of the number one things that we focus on here on our farm. You know, it, it's part of the success of our operation. You know, if, if we take care of the soil on our farm, it'll take care of us. Keeping the soil covered, so we're a no-till crop operation. All that residue helps capture moisture and it also helps feed the soil microbes. Something else we've been using for over 10 years is cover crops. We've really seen so much improvement in herd health and um, and soil health. So they really provide a lot of nutrients and diversity for your soil, but it's like giving your cattle a smorgasbord of salad bar goodness. The cattle, the crops, and the grasslands all work together because it's a system. Everything just works hand in hand. The cattle really help benefit the land. They're an integral part of our operation. They bring the system together and by integrating the cattle back onto our crop ground, we've really seen so much improvement in soil health. Timber Creek runs uh, right through the, the center of our main pasture here on the farm, and so it's a uh, part of our management of our grazing lands and in the pasture here to uh, maintain a clean water source there for us as well as the people downstream. Where Timber Creek flows through our land is all in pasture. We don't farm anything up around that watershed. It's really important for us to have those grasses along those areas to act as that filter system to keep the water healthy. We're always striving to, to do better and be better for the land and for the next generation. When you drive through the pasture with them and and they see the variety of, of grasses out here and the, the lushness of, of the forage that's available to the cows, they understand that 
stewardship pays off. Taking care of the land and the soil, it's a good thing and they see the results at a very young age. Now, let's share some legacy photos, outstanding images from all of this year's Environmental Stewardship Award-winning operations. Now don't forget, one of these Regional Stewardship Award winners will be named the national winner at the Cattle Industry Convention in Nashville. You can get details on how to attend at the website convention.ncba.org. So there you have it, the seven regional winners of the Environmental Stewardship Award for 2020. We salute and thank all the winners, the sponsors, and everyone involved who has helped make the Environmental Stewardship Award Program a success for the last three decades. That's our time for this special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you again next week right here on RFD TV. Yeah.